All right, so that's more from Garrus. We did, however, recently finish Miranda's loyalty mission, so I'm kind of interested to see if she has anything new to say to us. I think that the last time we chatted with her, it was basically the, well, this is, you know, a direct reflection on what we just did with that mission, but she might have other Commander, things. what can I do for you? That we can talk with her about. Do you have a minute, Miranda? Of course. I've been meaning to speak with you, in fact. Oh? I wanted to apologize. I didn't fully believe you'd be up to the task, and it seems I was wrong. Mm -hmm. Frankly, based on what I've seen, I wish Cerberus had recruited you earlier. Um, what? I mean, you didn't think we would succeed? I mean, in that case, Cerberus is wrong. Excuse me, and excuse you. I trust you, but I don't trust Cerberus. Your experiments crossed the line. All the time, yes. But I recall a spectre who crossed a few lines while hunting down Saren and the Geth. And we'd be lucky to have you. Too many join us out of simple xenophobia. We need more people here for the right reasons. So, are you actually trying to recruit us to join Cerberus in full right now? I saw your monsters. That is, I mean, true. We did see the creations, the abominations that you made in Mass Effect 1. Thorian creepers experimenting with... Rachni and a whole bunch of things. You also murdered, slash captured, and then murdered uh, Admiral Kohoku, which is not cool. Don't forgive you for that. What about Jack? I mean, Jack absolutely hates Cerberus. What was Cerberus trying to prove by experimenting on children like Jack? A mistake, no question. Not mine. And one that was corrected once we discovered the extent of the experiments being performed. All right, I mean, it just seems like you're going through a whole lot of effort here to justify some of the horrible things that Cerberus did, or in some cases you're saying, okay, yeah, fair, that was wrong, that was a mistake, but, you know, they happen frequently enough that it does think you would have to ask yourself, is this the type of situation, the type of organization I want to be affiliated with? Because perhaps not. With your intelligence, you could have landed any job you wanted. Why choose this? Because I still envy the time Morden spent with the Special Tasks group, working with people as smart as he was. Cerberus never tells me that something is impossible. They give me my resources and say do it. And they've given you even more. A new life, a new ship, the elusive man's personal attention. Mmm, this sounds a little aggressive. And by aggressive, I mean a little, you know, untoward. And maybe not the kind of the kind of message we're trying to send to Miranda here. Also, the game has decided to tab out. One moment. Watcha. We're back. Sound unhappy. What? You disapprove? No. I'm just impressed. You're well look at you. A spacer kid, educated with on ship tutorials, no strong foundation for stability. And you've done more than I could. Despite everything my father did to make me perfect, you're... you're the best humanity has to offer. <laughs> Does seem like perhaps she's... she's getting pretty aggressive with these compliments here. And is she trying to, you know, send the signs, give us the wink wink nudge nudge, hey Shepard? You're a really cool guy. You're a really cool guy. Ever... ever consider? Trying to, uh, you know, spend some time with a, a really cool girl? <laughs> this again? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it might mean that it may be time for us to, uh, time for us to just let's get going here. Things are getting, uh, things are getting a little stuffy in here. Just need to get a, you know, breath of fresh air. We'll get this done, Miranda. You can count on it. And I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Commander. I'm honored to be part of this. We got a little bit of renegade points because we we did at one point uh give a uh, a little bit of a sarcastic response to her i think the one where we were saying that maybe it was you know trying to send a little bit too much of the signs to miranda that perhaps we're not trying to send that 
did seem as though she was perhaps starting to express some interest in pursuing a relationship with Shepard, which is not really what we're trying to do. And I, well, may have been a little bit over-aggressive in trying to avoid that by going the renegade route when, in truth, it may not have been needed. Ooh, we got some renegade points from it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Let's see. Anything from Kasumi? Because I think that Samara's not going to have anything new to say to us. I was just thinking about you. Oh. I'm glad to hear Thane and his son are back in touch. It'll be hard, but I think they'll be fine. I hope so, too. I have to say, that Jacob... Mm -hmm. Yep. It seems pretty intense. I wonder if he likes Japanese girls with a penchant for kleptomania. Nah, see... You lost me. Alright. Then, other than that... Let's see. So... We checked in with Thane, we checked in with Garrus, we checked in with Miranda. We feel like we've exhausted all things we might want to talk with Samara about, and checked in with Kasumi, I suppose we could see if Saeed has anything new to say, or Grunt. Yeah, why don't we check in with them? There's a chance. We know Tally will be asking us about her loyalty mission, so I don't think we're going to get anything new out of her. Thinking about past missions. Got a minute. You might learn something. Hmm. I was trying to remember how many Cerberus operatives I've killed. Lost track around 50. Yeah, we've definitely heard that one from Zaid before. Abusive man's big on forgiveness. All right, let's see if Grunt has anything new to say. Hey, Grunt. And so even on the ship, as you may have noticed with Miranda, and as we are currently seeing with Grunt, when we choose to take the alternative outfits, not only are they wearing those on missions when we take them out with us, but also when they're just hanging out in the Normandy like this. Shepard. Anything new? Just checking in. How you doing? Battlemaster, I have everything. Clan, kin, and enemies to fight. Good? Sounds good, then? Any updates on your thoughts on the mission? What are your thoughts about our mission? We'll push our enemies to the edge of space, then step on their fingers one at a time until the void takes them. That sounds like cruel and unusual punishment, but... Okay, uh, what about our teammates, our squad? What do you think about the crew? Good bunch if they stay out of my way. Dead bunch if they don't. Yeah, I think we've heard this. good if you want to take on collectors. Some of these aliens are too smooth. That's all for now. Smooth aliens are the worst. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, wait. Are humans smooth aliens? Hold on. All right. I think that's everything in terms of people we might want to chat with here. Okay, so we're back up here. Thank you, Kelly. Then... In terms of what that leaves us with, we don't have that much left. In terms of our key main missions here, we have Tally's loyalty mission, we have Jacob's loyalty mission, we have the the sort of main, the, the most main of missions, <laughs> tracking down the Reaper IFF. This is the one that I was saying, though, that we want to wait as long as possible before we do, so we will definitely wait before we do that. In terms of assignments, oh, we did also get the update on this little... ID, the forged ID that we found while we were doing Garrus's loyalty mission, so the forged ID has been located while assaulting Harkin's hideout in the Zakara Ward factory district. It may prove useful to someone. Find someone who might make use of the forged ID. Okay, so in theory there is someone who is uh, on the Citadel who may find that useful. We are currently at the Citadel. Not sure if I remember where that person is, but we can try looking around I suppose.
All right, so I don't think the team is going to matter too much here. We're mostly just looking to walk around the Citadel. Um, actually, have we taken the combo of Tally and Garrison to the Citadel yet? We've actually used this combo for a couple of missions as of late. But, I mean, in terms of points, it doesn't really matter here. Weapons shouldn't really matter either. No comments about someone named Fade we should pursue? Oh man. I'm sorry, sir. It's a new so era. Any amp you might be what? I don't remember this. Sir, biotics can be used as a weapon. The rules require me to confiscate all amps. Could you please hand over yours? I don't have one. I'm not a biotic. Oh. Well, when you objected, I thought... You humans are all racist. Oh. Okay. All right, so we're looking for somebody who needs some kind of, or well, who had slash needs some kind of special ID or forged ID. So as I was saying, I don't recall where on the Citadel this person is, but in theory they exist. That much can be said. Kargesh is the Krogan who was asking about whether there are fish in the little ponds, if you want to call them that, on the Citadel. It's a fish. Fish have nothing to do with the Citadel. Besides, it'll be dead in a couple of years. A lifespan talk. Alright, so this goes up. You ever miss those talks we had on the elevator? No. Come on, remember how we'd all ask you about life on the flotilla? It was an opportunity to share. This conversation is over. Tell me again about your immune system. I have a shotgun. <laughs> And that, that is why you bring the combination of Garrus and Tally with you on the Citadel, because you can only hear that if you bring them with you. And of course, throw back to Mass Effect 1, the elevator chat. Good times. Good times indeed. Let's see, so, anyone here in need of a forged ID? Well, I mean, are we helping somebody with a forged ID? Because, uh, I don't know, that, is that something we want to be doing? Forge ID has been located while assaulting Harkin's hideout in Sakara Ward, Packer District. It may prove useful to someone. Find someone who might make use of a Forge ID. I think we we talked to uh, Bailey after or after those missions, right? It's not like we could turn it into him and be like, hey, here's this Forged ID that you might want to do something about so that nobody is using it and, uh, you know, doing something to abuse the system. But I don't think we had an option previously with with Bailey to bring that up at all. Not sure if said person would be in here. Well, I mean, somebody who wants to, to get a drink who's perhaps underage, then I suppose that would be a way to do it. But uh, kids, no, don't don't do that. Don't do that. That's not good. We don't support that, so we won't do it here. It doesn't look like the person is there. We will take a look downstairs, and if we can't find him, then we'll try on a future occasion. I know it looks like I'm not working, but there's only so many times you can sweep the place. If Let's see. For a sec there. I thought I saw someone we could interact with. Oh, probably the Galactic News over there. I was going to say, be above and beyond this rapid transit area. But let's use this, let's see, because we are on 27, we are currently on 28, let's just go down to 26 and see if the individual might be down here. Greetings, Earth Clan. You will find many excellent ships for sale here. Only slightly used, yes. Mm, not from you, though. Not from you. Let's see. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite story. Did Verana say the Omnigel modulator's heatsink from this tech shop, or the heatsink modulator? With deep respect, I'm sure he would never confuse the two. Wait, <laughs> did you hack your translator so you can control your kinetic language processing? 
With the sincerity such that skepticism would be deeply insulting. <laughs> oh. That is a very specific way of prefacing that statement. Ah, uh, my favorite customer. What can I get you? I was going to say, I, I doubt I'll be here if you need that anything. we would give it to any of the actual shopkeepers. But just in case, here do we give it a quick check. I'm Commander Shepard. The nerve enhancements say that there are occasional motor control Same there. I assume. What if it makes him fall down? Jake is fine. Wait, this was a trick, wasn't it? See, there's a refund the guy. I wouldn't know anything. This is, of course, the area where we had this confrontation that it helped us start the loyalty mission for Garrus, but at least at the moment, I'm not seeing the person in question. I mean, sure we'll find him on a future occasion. Not the end of the Just world. Refund in exchange, and I was told to pick up a new army jail for murder here. I don't think so. I think in that case, no, sure, they said to go we'll just head back to Normandy. We'll find him. It's not urgent. So we're back, and I think what I'd like for us to do here is, as we were saying a little while ago, we don't have very many main missions remaining. We don't have very many side missions slash assignments remaining here. I mean, we do have this tiny little one on the Citadel, but we uh, at least didn't initially see the person we were looking for. But what we could do, what we could do is if we leave orbit here, And uh, maybe we just fuel back up. Ah, we're doing okay on fuel. But. We will see that there are still many areas that are not fully explored. So there is definitely a chance that we could find some places where there are missions that we've not yet discovered that just need to be, uh, well, need to have the planets probed. And so... It is probably worth us taking a closer look here somewhere. Let's see. Got Shadow Sea, that is 100%. So is Nubian Expanse. Hades Nexus, 100%. We've got 100% Calcium Rift. Wow, okay, well, we've got, got a few hundred percents. Hawking Eta, that is where the Reaper IFF is, and that is something that we are going to wait to do, so I think we don't do that yet. We've got Phoenix Massing, is 100%. Far Rim, 100%. So, okay, you know what? Maybe we do have more 100% that I'm giving ourselves credit for. One where Jacob's loyalty mission is. We will definitely do that eventually, but what I'm thinking is that's 100%, that's 100%. What if we do. Well, actually, Crescent Nebula, where Ilium is? We only have 20. What? They haven't explored the area around Ilium? That seems pretty crazy. I mean, presumably, yeah, we've done everything in this immediate area, but if we were to go to some of the neighboring systems, we have on Des. On Deste, Lucerne. See anything else, or is it just those two? Oh, yeah, Zeline, down there. That looks like it. Let's see, why don't we? I don't know. I guess we'll go Zeline first. What is the? The way they're spread out look like yeah i think it probably makes most sense to go Zeline, then maybe even double back to Tassali, fuel back up then go lucerne after that on deste okay let's see so got a few planets in here let's check it out we have galon galon is surrounded by an extensive ring system the inner rings are composed pulverized nano manufactured carbon materials Thought to be the remains of an Arthenai Helium-3 mining infrastructure. A few places, a few pieces of larger debris found indicate a materials technology at least equal to the current galactic state of the art. Oh, so whoever it was that initially made this stuff, sounds like a very long time ago, was quite advanced technologically. The outer ring consists of water ice, silicate dust, and the odd bit of rock. 
Analysis of the debris often show shock damage and evidence of rapid heating. Further indication that perhaps once upon a time there were people who were... I, colonizes, colonizing is maybe a strong word, but at least performing some operations on this planet. Some parahistorical theorists insist that the outer rings represent debris from a moon or moons destroyed by mass accelerator bombardment. That would be... Yeah, that'd be a little extreme. Uh, you had me up until there. This has been rejected by every reputable Xeno-archaeologist. While it is theoretically possible to destroy a small moon utterly with dreadnought bombardment, no species sees a compelling reason to do so. Alright, fair enough. If we scan it, it is moderate from a resource standpoint, but no anomalies here. And a decently large source of palladium. And as we've said somewhat recently, you know, we may actually be in need of doing a little more scanning. Sometimes somewhat soon, but let's see. We could probably save that for a rich planet, and we might still have a little bit of time before we need to make a call on whether that's necessary or not. Next, we have EFO. EFO is a rocky world with an atmosphere of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The large, or there are large craters scattered across its surface, obviously from hypervelocity kinetic impactors. So again, sounds like signs of advanced technological species doing something over here. Stretching between these locations are the shattered remains of magnetic levitation rail lines, which strongly suggests the craters represent the former locations of Artheni mining operation. Ar Artheni? Artheni? Is that the name of the species in question? Otherwise, it's a word that I'm not familiar with. Mining outposts or other settlements. The equatorial region contains an extensive network of canyons formed by the planet's abundant liquid water. Abundant liquid water? That sounds promising. Oxygen in the atmosphere? Travel advisory, EFO's atmosphere is approximately 41% carbon dioxide at sea level. That is a lot of carbon dioxide, though. This level is four to six times that necessary to render most species unconscious within a few minutes of breathing it. Breathing masks must be worn at all times when on the surface of EFO. Okay, so that, that is a little bit of a setback. What would have otherwise perhaps been a promising planet for development purposes. Okay, it does have a fair bit of iridium, but that is the resource that we are doing the best on right now. Iridium and Ezo. Whereas, you know, if we got, like, an amazing source of palladium, as we are seeing there, that's not bad. You know, you can maybe convince... Maybe convince me to make a move for it. Platinum, if it were a little better than this, but it's not, not, not quite at that level we'd like for it to be. Like, that's... Pretty solid there for the palladium for a second. The iridium, again, we don't really care about it. So yeah, I think we'll pass for now. As I was saying, we may need to do a little bit more scanning at some point, but I don't think we need to commit to that just yet. An anomaly. Oh, we have an anomaly here. Teleme is a post-garden world that once enjoyed an Earth-like oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere. It is still blessed with plentiful water, but a generally cold climate and extreme seasonal shifts courtesy of a 38 degree axial tilt. What is Earth? Earth is, I forget if it's 20, what, 27.5 or something like that? It's either that or it's 22.5, 27.5. So, and that is, at least for Earth, that is what causes the most significant, that is the key driver of the seasons. So, you know, if you're tilted toward the sun at a certain time of year, that is your summertime. If you are tilted away from the sun at a certain point of the year, then that is your winter time. Whereas if you have a more extreme axial tilt, then that means that, well, your seasons are more extreme. So Helame is thought to be the homeworld of the Arthen. Okay, so yes, that answers some questions about you know, what is that word? Yes, it is the species that we are hearing a lot about before. A spacefaring species which disappeared approximately 30,000 years ago. Precisely what happened to Helame is still... Or, yeah, is still under debate. It appears a global extinction occurred, wiping out all native animal life forms more complex than zooplankton. Plant forms were not affected, but the lack of oxygen-breathing life caused oxygenation of the atmosphere. Plant life was reduced after lightning storms ignited global wildfires with all that oxygen. I suppose that makes some sense. The leading theory for Helame's devastation is an out-of-control biological weapon. For this reason, landing is strictly prohibited. The corporations of Ilium have replaced or in place a network of quarantine satellites to dissuade would-be looters from landing in the crumbling cities. 
to. So it is, it's a little cold, but it's got a, an atmosphere that's somewhat similar to that of Earth, and same with the gravity. If we scan, there is apparently some kind of anomaly here. Let's check it out. See, anomaly detected. Mercenary activity detected inside a mining facility on the planet's surface. Facility confirmed registered to Eldfell Ashland Energy Corporation. Eclipse presence confirmed. Distress beacon powered down at site. Sensors detect multiple spacefaring vessel launches from facility. Very interesting. Signs of an eclipse base, you say? Hmm. Okay, so we do have the option of landing here. Let's take a look first, however, at the very least, at our journal now. So N7 captured mining facility. Let's see, scans detect eclipse mercenary activity inside a mining facility on the planet Helame. Land on the planet where eclipse seems to have taken residence in an abandoned mine. Okay, so that is an option. That is an option. But we do have several other missions in this, or several other areas, I should say that we have not yet explored over here. There may be other missions as well. So, oh, and we also have not yet explored everything here. There's still this guy. There's still Nepima, tidally locked to the star Zelene. Nepina has the expected hot pole and cold pole. Along the, ter the Terminator is a thin band of nearly habitable terrain. Unfortunately, the local biosphere is based on a chlorinated oxygen atmosphere. It is not sophisticated, but it has proven highly dangerous, so there is life. It's just uh, not based on the same elements that life is typically based on elsewhere. Fluorine being the primary difference. The Asari surveyor Varalas landed on Nepima in 1684 to study the local ecology. Unbeknownst to the crew, a handful of native chlorine-fixing microbes passed through biohazard screening and entered the ship. And my guess is things went horribly, horribly wrong from there. The Veralis returned to the port of Nospernalo on Ilium, where the, Nep where the Nepimen microbes escaped into a temperate environment with plentiful unused chlorine. Oh no. The microbes devoured the chlorides in the earth. As metabolic byproducts, they produced toxic polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs. By the time the infestation was contained, an area of nearly 30 square kilometers had been effectively turned into a toxic waste dump. Nos Parnalo had to be abandoned, accelerating the development of Nos Astra, which is the city on Ilium that we have been visiting. Okay, uh, I mean, at least at the, the Terminator, I, I assume, is where this temperature is 32 degrees, so basically the the line where it is always the horizon, because again, the same, since it's tidally locked, the same side of the planet is always facing the sun, the same side of the planet is always facing away from Earth to star. The same side of the planet is always facing away from the star. That means there's also just this ring around the planet where it is constantly, basically the, the star right on the horizon, and that's where it is uh, the most moderate or the most livable temperatures, because it's not extreme hot like it would be on the side that's always facing the star, and it's not extreme cold like the side that would always be facing away from the star. Let's scan. And it is rich. And I figure it might have been, because this, this sounds like a very unique planet. One that might have some special resources. No anomaly, of course, but uh, that being said, for a rich planet, there's uh, not very many resources yet. Um, hello? Anything? Any... any noticeable things at all. Okay. Okay, now we're talking a little bit more. That was a decent chunk of Iridium, but as we said before, Iridium is the resource we are doing the best on at the moment. So, the one that we are least in need of... Oh, oh, um... Palladium? Even that doesn't seem that incredible. Well, okay. That starts to get decent. That's pretty solid. But, as we were saying before, I think for the most part, we're, we're still... Not looking to launch probe after probe at the moment when we may not need to get any more probes set out here. So there is a mission here, but we are looking at other areas here as well that we've not yet explored. I feel like, why don't we get a 
better sense of the lay of the land first. Yeah, it's gonna mean, you know, we might have to do a little bit of doubling back later on and cost a little more fuel to do so, but we'll be fine. Let's, speaking of fuel, let's head back here real quick. To load back up before we head out to those other areas. So. And that's the other thing, is that that area that we were just at is pretty close to this starting section, so couldn't cost us much fuel to head back if needed. Okay, so then we have, I thought these two places, basically, yeah, one right after the other. So, I mean, I don't know, do you go on Deste and then double back for Lucarne on your way back to take the mass relay and get out of here eventually? Do you go Lucarne and then on Deste and then, you know, you're, you're just doubling back for the only purpose to get back to the mass relay? I, I don't know, I mean, either one could theoretically work, I suppose. Why don't we... let's go on Desta first. This one's pretty far. So this is one that, you know, kind of painful to have to build back here, but we'll see what we run into. We've got... Mysooth. Farthest from the Did Red Dwarf on Desta, the Ice Dwarf Mysooth has attracted no interest beyond a cursory flyby by automatic, automated probe in 1874. No significant resources were noted. We will be the judge of that. Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose good. But that that's actually a lot. A whole lot of platinum. I am surprised that uh, a good planet has that much. I imagine that uh, perhaps once you get... Is that the same one? That might be the same one. I imagine that once you get rid of that big source, even this one's not that bad. Once you get rid of those sources, it probably just absolutely tanks these scanner results. You know, it goes from good to poor or depleted just because... Uh, it's good, it means it doesn't have that much in total, and it seems like the vast majority of that is all consolidated into one or two chunks. And then we have a carrier? Though nearly the size of Earth, a carrier contains only 28% of its mass. It has a trace atmosphere of neon and molecular nitrogen, but the predominant carbon dioxide has long since frozen and fallen to the surface as frost. While a carrier has a core of heavy metals, the bulk of the planet's volume consists of water ice. Oh, so that's why it's so light, I suppose. Several unique forms of long-chain carbon molecules have been recovered on the surface, pushed up from beneath the ice by cryovolcanic processes. Caria has a large rocky moon, compositionally similar to Luna. It does have a lot of similarities with Earth in some ways, but uh, and the whole long-chain carbon molecule seems to be a, perhaps a precursor to life developing. It is rich for resources. I feel like this could be an Ezo place. Giving me Ezo vibes. Again, the rarest of resources, but technically the one that I think we need the least here. Ooh. Ooh, that's pretty darn sweet for platinum, though. I mean, if we needed it, which we short term kind of do for some upgrades, but as we were saying, long term, if we're patient, we may not, then. Oh. Maybe we don't need to launch the probes, but we do at the same time have 17 probes, but we might need the probes for anomalies and things like that later on in case we find other places with quests. So, I think we resist the urge for now. It does seem like that is very much the, the big spike, and then the other stuff, comparatively, quite minor. And that's it. That's the same one again. Okay, so that's... Icaria. Then we have Zezmeni. Cold, dim, and shrouded by a methane ammonia atmosphere, Zezmeni has nevertheless attracted development by Asari mining concerns that service military industries. There are significant loads of valuable light metals present, including titanium and lithium. Titanium, titanium is the primary material used in mass accelerator slugs, and lithium is used in military grade droplet heat radiators used aboard warships. So there is a population here, there is a settlement of 620 people, so quite small, but they exist. And it is a rich planet, as it also seemed like this might be, given how they're talking about how people want to mine this thing. So we got anything interesting? We got a few, uh, a few somewhat big chunks here, but still not sure that that's really better than other things we've seen in the past. That's not bad.
but once again, I think it's just one of the situations where we've, we've done the scanning that we want to do, and, you know, unless we find ourselves desperately in need of additional resources, then we'll pass for now. And that is the last of the things on Untesta here. So we were saying we'd probably double back to Lucarne, so let's do that now. Fuel at one half capacity. Okay. And this system looks comparatively quite a bit bigger. Let's check it out. We have Zetic, a common methane ammonia gas giant. Zetic is best known for the infamous Calthor camp. Established on the ice moon of Jessus, Jessus, Calthor was a Blue Sun's hostile environment training facility run by a cadre, love that word, of former Batarian Special Intervention Unit operators. In 2168, a cluster-wide scandal broke out when it was revealed that the mortality rate of recruits sent to the camp might be as high as 18%. Yeah, that's not a good look. Investigation by Asari authorities based on Ilium uncovered group graves around the facility containing the remains of several hundred recruits dating back two decades. The camp was immediately closed and the remains sent back to their worlds of origin. An inquest by the Blue Suns found the Batarian commandos had used harsh training methods, but these were consistent with their own training to join the SIU. The Batarians were exonerated, though Kalthor was shut down, and they were reassigned to other units. As the Crescent Nebula is beyond the sphere of council law, no civil charges could be filed against the Blue Suns. Okay, let's scan it. It is moderate amount of resources here, so I mean, with no anomaly, not really expecting anything here, so let's pass. Next up, we have anomaly an anomaly detected on Terith. Terith is broadly Earth-like, with a fatal flaw. It has a relatively high amount of chlorine in its atmosphere. We heard this recently about a, another planet. The reason for the greenish haze that becomes apparent when looking at the horizon. Chlorine has become a vital component in Terence's plant life. As a defense mechanism against native herbivores, many species evolved to the ability to release clouds of toxic chlorine when disturbed. Uh-oh. And we can land on this planet, mind you. Are we gonna die if we bump into the plants? This gas is heavier than the atmospheric oxygen and tends to settle in low places. While avoidable, this has placed Terence near the bottom of a list of for colonization. There are intermittent, intermittent signals originating from the heart of a large chlorine swamp. They appear to be coded, though it is not possible, or though it is not impossible. They are garbled distress signals from a downed civilian ship. Hmm? We're expecting some kind of anomaly here, so let's check it out. The vulture are hungry for battle? Also, conveniently, there's some palladium in this spot, so that's nice. Let's see, preliminary scans indicate a high-powered communications relay on the planet. Communications match known blood pack mercenary protocols. The concentration of Krogan and Vorture signals are masked inside what appears to be a mining operation. Life signs detected. Unknown species. Advise caution. Ooh, okay. So, we can land here for this new mission, but before we do so, let's read up on our journal entry. And uh, maybe we'll just finish up checking out the rest of this area. So, blood pack base. Whoa. See, then we have this area here. Dorie. Dorie is a large, hot world with a poisonous atmosphere of acidic nitrogen oxides. While the planet is too close to Lucerne for this to condense and fall as rain, this makes the environments too hostile for forms of life more sophisticated than bacteria to evolve. But it sounds like you're saying there are bacteria, or at least could be bacteria here. It's just good, though. Resources, and there's no anomaly on this occasion, so I think we probably pass. And then we have this asteroid belt, which may have something. Let's check the other planets first, and then if they're still not 100% explored, then we'll check the asteroid belt. Also, can't help but notice that that innermost planet is absolutely ginormous, so curious to check that out in a minute. Let's see, But now we have Untanta. Untanta is remarkably close to Earth. Its orbital distance is similar, and while slightly larger, its reduced density yields similar mass, atmospheric pressure, and gravity. There are there the similarities end, for Lucerne is a hot class F star, emitting over eight times the energy of Sol. So uh, yeah, that sounds like this planet is going to get absolutely fried by the sun, the star in that case. 
Puntanta is a parched wasteland, its water long since boiled away into its nitrogen carbon dioxide atmosphere. A handful of mining operations or outposts dot the hellishly hot surface. The crews remain in underground bunkers, sending remotely controlled machines out at night to do surface work and load cargo for shipment. There are 230 people here, despite it being 415 degrees Celsius. That sounds pretty crazy. But they are living in underground bunkers. Not so surprisingly in that case, I don't know how else you could survive here. Probably could not. Right, but it is rich. Understandable for a planet that is actively being mined at the moment. But rich with what? Palladium? And if so, how much? Ooh, fair bit. Fair bit at that. So this could be an interesting one if we found ourselves in need of palladium, which we arguably could use now, but I think, at least at the moment, as we've said, as we have been saying, we will hold off. We actually did get some, I think, from uh, that pro we launched recently, so, I mean, that's something. And this one I'm really curious about because it is almost the same size as the star, and it is right next to it. This has got to be an extra solar capture, right? Duntan is a fairly standard close-orbiting Pegasid gas giant, orbiting the star Lucerne, Lu yeah, Lucerne at high velocity and heated to temperatures of over 1,000 degrees. Talking Celsius or Fahrenheit, analysis of its orbit has revealed a core of heavy elements with a mass double that of the planet's hydrogen-helium atmosphere. It's good in terms of its uh, resource quality here, and just so happens that we started scanning right on top of a platinum deposit, but... It's interesting. Those are actually half decent, yes. Actually, that's pretty solid. That's quite good. It's very good, in fact. I'm surprised. A good planet has what is arguably scale-breaking platinum right here. But despite platinum being something that we may need, or at least in the short term, uh, again, long term, we may be able to get by without it. So I think we pass for now. And before we do anything here, let's check out our journal entries here, because we did get an update for the Blood Pack Communications Relay. Intel on planet Territh, the place where we currently are, reveals a Blood Pack Communications Relay on the planet's surface, as well as a Blood Pack controlled mining operation. Land on the planet Territh and investigate the Blood Pack presence there. Okay, that certainly does sound interesting. I feel like, why don't we try this one out? Why don't we try this one out? Okay, so that means we'll land here. And as a reminder, preliminary scans indicate high-powered communications relay on the planet, communications match no blood pack, mercenary protocols, a concentration of Krogan, and fortress signals are massed inside what appears to be a mining operation. Life signs detected unknown species advise caution. So, Fortia and Krogan, that makes sense with Blood Pack, but otherwise some unknown species, that does raise some questions. So, uh, caution, we'll proceed with caution. Okay, and for our team composition here, our team composition, I think what we're gonna want is, let's see, hmm, I and mean, we could potentially take Miranda, of course, we now have Slam with her after having finished her loyalty mission. I don't think we've really used her after having done that. So that could be an interesting option for us. Thane also has some similar abilities here, or at least has Warp. Has that Shredder ammo that we just picked up after finishing his loyalty mission. Also has Throw. Uh, we haven't had the chance to use him much. We've tried to throw him in for uh, random trips to hub worlds, but on actual missions, what with them being our most recent addition, we had him on a loyalty mission that we just did, but there wasn't actually any combat for that. It was basically just purely dialogue. So it might be kind of nice to get the chance to use Thane here. And uh, let's see, let's go for it. Anyone else that we have not really gotten a chance to do much of yet? Uh, hmm. I think for this mission, what we're gonna want is, I mean, I'm kind of eyeing people that have warp, so that's why I was eyeing Miranda and Thane specifically, so let's go with Thane, and I mean, we could do Miranda as well, of course we have used her a lot, but just to get the chance to use her post-loyalty mission, why not? We'll go for it. 
so then, for Shepard, we're looking fine here. For Miranda, we could throw additional points into Slam, but I think we'll just keep it on the one for now, and we'll try to have this last uh, few points put into Overload 4 when we get the chance. Then, for you, Thane, we also have one point for you. I mean, I'm not really at all interested in Shredder Ammo. If anything, I'd like to unallocate that so we can more quickly get you into Throw 4. But I think, for right now, uh, we can't do anything with just one point, and Shepard saying no to the Cryo Ammo, so yeah. That means that we are done there. And then, for our weapons here, Locust, Matic, if plasma shotgun, Carnifex, I think this should be fine. Arc projector, I mean, not sure we're gonna need to use heavy weapons in this instance, but actually, hmm, arc projector might actually have a, a use case here, come to think of it, in one specific instance, if I'm not mistaken. Miranda, Locust, Carnifex, makes sense. Thane is sniper plus SMG. So uh, we can go Locust for him as well, and uh, sure, I guess we'll keep the incisor. So with that, it means that uh, Miranda, of course, isn't really a, a weapons based person all that much, although we did recently upgrade our heavy pistols, I believe, so that should help her a bit. And Thane provides a little bit more special stuff, because he has the range with the sniper, and that's something that we don't have, so that's nice between the three of us that we have all our bases covered there. Oh, what the heck? Fog on the planet's surface is interfering with your navigation. The nearby beacon towers may serve as a navigational contingency. Oh, lovely. So, it looks like we may, in that case, find ourselves in another area where we have a, uh, a bit of a challenge seeing through here, and uh, also, you know, it, it, this might technically be a, another humid environment place, which means it's technically making your uh, Kepril syndrome a little bit worse here, Thane, so sorry about that. We also may have sent you to another humid environment with our only other mission that we've sent you on, other than our, your loyalty mission, but, uh, you know, maybe not doing the best job of keeping you safe in that sense, but you know, trying to get the chance to see you in action a bit. Also, your, your mask is quite odd-looking. Okay, so, it is difficult to see here. We do have some fog, but at least at the moment it's not terrible. It's not atrociously awful. But we'll see if it continues like this, or if it gets any more significant, because that looks much worse. Okay, let's see, we've got what ammo, whatever it's worth. I am not sure what happened here, Miranda got a data pad and we've got a beacon we can activate. And so if we use that beacon, then in theory, what we start to see is this light will shine away toward a, another area that we can go to. So this is basically our, uh, our guide, our guide to help us get through here. But there is also a data pad. Let's check this out. Attention all workers, stop chipping away at this node. There's nothing left here to mine. Move on to the other sites now. Solomon. Okay. So, some kind of mining operation. Door. Well, let's also, before we forget, I think we are the only ones, yeah, that can provide ammo effects. Well, technically, they can buy his own, uh... Shredder ammo, but not really interested in that. Sorry, Thane. I think we would greatly prefer the incendiary ammo instead. Just throw it on all our weapons while we're at it real quick. Okay. And in terms of the type of weapon we want to be using here, I think for Thane we're Probably gonna want to use the incisor. For Miranda, it might be more so the Carnifex. Understood. For us, the Micromatic. Okay. So, again, we can more or less follow the light of that beacon to take us to 
the next spot we're looking to go to. Except it may not always be that simple. Because, uh, let's just say, this mission is a bit of a maze. Bit of a maze. Be careful. This atmosphere is toxic. Oh. Great. Well, there is the next beacon. I mean, that first one is very simple. So, see that one? Taking us over in this direction. Let's just look around a little bit and... The thing about this quest is that although you can get that shortcut of sorts by following the beacons, it is uh, at times perhaps a little bit misleading. Oh, oh I think that's our warning because I'm seeing some red dots here. That may be a bit of a, a bit misleading because there may be some other things off the side on some occasions where we can pick up some additional loots or things of that variety. So you, you just want to bear that in mind because... There may be uh, any other things for you to pick up that you might miss out on if you just go straight to the beacons. Hostiles. Oh, and I remember this mission. I remember this mission. So we have seen Clixen before on a few loyalty missions, right? We saw it on uh, Grunt's loyalty mission. We might have seen it on who else was it? Was it uh, also Morden's loyalty mission on basically everything on Tuchanka? However. I believe the first time I played Mass Effect 2, I might have done this side quest before I did either of those loyalty missions because I think this was my first encounter with Clixen and I was very taken aback. So let's see, it does have armor and all these abilities do extra damage against armor. That one hit. So that's why, that's why all the warp would be very helpful to us. So I like that. Remember that Clixen when they get close, breathe fire, which makes them very dangerous. They deal a ton of damage if they get too close to you. They also explode on death, so make sure you're, again, killing them from far away. And they are, once you get rid of their armor at least, completely resistant to fire damage. So our incendiary ammo would not be great, at least once we get them down to health. So we can activate this beacon. It sends us that way, but I'm just curious to see here. Might be something down off to the side. I saw something. Raw material take. 400 platinum. Okay, that is one of the resources that we were saying we didn't have quite as much as we would like of. So that is nice to get more of it here. So I, I do like that. And that's kind of what I mean, where the, the beacon is pointing us over in that direction. I went in the opposite direction to pick up this platinum here. That's the kind of thing where you could miss it if you're not careful about checking those little side areas there. So... Carry on. And now, perhaps the clicks in for the enemies in question. Oh. And that. And that. The ones that we were reading about that said that uh, our log was not able to identify what they were. There's the clicks in. Read it. Warp it. Shoot it. Watch it explode. Okay, is that the only one? Or are there more where that came from? Is there anything around here? We have the combat music, but I'm not seeing any more. That's the place where we just came from, so we're fine there. Okay, check here. Again, this is not quite the direction that the beacon was pointing us in. It pointed us more along that other path over there, I think. But there are some raw materials here. Another 400 chunk of platinum, so we'll definitely take it. And this is apparently a mining operation, so I suppose we shouldn't be terribly surprised that that is happening here. Why don't we check the other side while we're at it, though? I'm not sure we'll find anything, but just in case. Enemies in front. Ooh, hello. Flixen just pops out right in front of us. And there's another one behind. Guys, you, you gotta fall back. Be right you are getting blown up, slash getting 
Flame. It's not good. Miranda, you, you need to fall back like right now. Right behind you. Thank you. Okay. My question was. But Saint, what are you doing? Right behind you. It's like charging ahead. My question was, is there anything else over here? Yeah, this is where the, the beacon was. Again, this is sort of the most direct route to follow where the beacon is pointing us, but just wanted to see if there might be anything else of interest here. I mean, more clicks in, yes. Let's see, otherwise, I think the two pathways would join up here. We head on up. Yeah, it is possible that this could be your first encounter with clicks, and as I was saying, I think it was. What were they doing? Or at least here? the first that I remember from my initial Mass Effect 2 playthrough. Let's see, we have a beacon we can activate again. This one will point us in that direction, but before we head over there, let's. Ooh. I remember seeing those little bugs in Mass Effect 1 as well. Whatever fight happened here, it was recent. Ooh. It's like. Orcha? And more Vorcha. And we heard Vorcha and Krogan from the, uh, the description and, well, based on how this is apparently a blood pack operation. Let's see what we can learn about here. Attention all workers. Fall back now. Evacuation shuttles are on the way. Anyone not in the gathering site when the shuttles arrive will be left here with those bugs. And Salamon. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Anything else over here? That was the data pad. Okay. Is there anything else in the other direction, or is this the only way we could go? Again, generally speaking, at least in this mission, I think the name of the game is you know where you're supposed to go based on finding the path that follows the the light from the beacon most directly, but then whenever possible, if you're looking for the other stuffs, you try to deviate from that path. To the extent that you can. Let's see. It's a fork in the road? It does look like it. Oh, another one of these. Flies off. And usually that means that we are going to find ourselves some more clicks in. Clicks in his tanky. Oh, it's a bad time to have to reload. Okay. Ooh, and I thought we were done with the Clickson. We are very much not done with the Clickson. There's even another one behind that. You see how quickly we get rid of their armor with our ammo. It's surprisingly fast. We really slowed it down though. That is key. Is that the last of them for now? I think so, and I think it may be difficult to come across more ammo on this mission because I don't think the Clickson will drop any. Let's see, our next beacon, what, went from here over to there? Okay. So that's where we're headed next, at least in theory. There was this other area over to this side. Thought. You might want to check out. Go to the left. But there just be more clicks in, I suppose it's possible. But no, there will be more raw materials. We'll grab some of those. And the platinum in particular is definitely useful to us. Let's see, we did also recently pick up the heavy pistol damage upgrade, so I am kind of curious to see how much damage this can deal. And, uh, I mean, the Carnifex heavy pistols in general do do deal extra damage against armor. That is sort of their specialty. So, oh, and in fact, here we almost missed. Oh, wait, ammo. Thank you very much. Let's see. Salamul. I can't get any more Vorcha from Omega. Garm has his own problems. I recognize that name. 
going to have to man up and deal with this on your own. Maybe build a beacon path. Sounds like he did, based on what we are currently following. I bet those darn Forja are just wandering off in the fog and getting lost. From Kalusk. Okay, so now it is somebody else messaging to Salamul, who was the person we were hearing from previously. So there's a bit of a back and forth between them. Let's see, anything hiding in that corner? No. Hmm. Well, that looks ominous, but there are raw materials over there. Get more platinum. I think we're at what? Like 1,600 at this point or something? Quite a bit. Oh, is that ammo? It is, but we actually don't need it, somewhat surprisingly. Can we go under this? Is that just. Nah, it's just the wall. The boulder. The nice boulder. Okay, there's that way. Is there anything even further to the left? Actually, it might be. Oh no, that's the data pad we just got. Okay, no worries. Alright, so onward we go. And uh, the Klixen have generally uh, they started to come in greater numbers and start quite close to us, which may mean that you know this may not be the best time to experiment with this new Carnifex approach. There is the beacon. Let's see. So we can activate the next one. This one's kind of knocked over. Still gonna work. Didn't really see where that was sending. Oh, that way. Okay, sure. Um, is there even any other way to go, even if we wanted to? I'm not sure that there is. At least not at the moment. Why don't, I don't remember when we last saved, but I feel like we probably should. Anything else? No signs of enemies yet? Oh, hold on, music is changing. What does that mean? Oh, I see you, Clixen. I see you, Clixen. You can't fool me. Ooh, that is pretty solid damage, yeah. Hey, Fane, don't don't be hero man. Don't be hero man. Right behind you. Fane, for whatever reason, is being very aggressive pressing forward, and he's the sniper, mind you. Okay, looks like we have another fork in the road here. Either go left or we can go right, I mean. Try both. Well, there's the beacon. And in this case, the new one looks like it's sending us that way. First, why don't we check over here, then? Ooh, and we've got one pack boom squad and basic trooper. Okay, so that means he has a grenade launcher. That's a problem. Did we just completely annihilate him? I think we just completely annihilated him. Okay, let's see. We've got fine platinum over here. This guy. Eating worms? Okay. Uh, I didn't see how much that was, but I think that was maybe, I mean, I imagine, probably the same amount or close to the same amount we were getting from the the rocks that we found before. So that's good stuff. Then, let's see. The actual beam is taking us in that direction, I believe. So, of course, this mission can be a whole lot harder if you do not follow the beams and you're just wandering aimlessly. and Or at least you may know that you're supposed to follow the beams, so you lose track of, am I supposed to go in this direction or in that direction? If you forget which way you came from, and then you're going backwards half the time, that can be painful. So, uh, be careful of that. Let's see, we've got another beacon over there. We've got area through there. Why don't we let's activate the beacon first to see where it's trying to send us, and then we'll... Check out that other spot if that is not where it's trying to tell us to go. Uh, 
He can still just go right there. So yeah, let's see what is over here in that case, because it seems like this is yeah, not where it's trying to send us. There's a data pad. Salamul, where are the resources? Are you mining out there or standing around waiting for those Vorcha to get smarter? Our guy on Ilium can't keep the lights on forever. Lights off forever? We keep stalling and we'll have a heck of a fight on our way. And that would make me really, really angry. Kalisk. Okay, so it sounds like, yeah, Kalisk is the person who is not directly working here, but is sort of coordinating with the Salamul person, and Salamul apparently is the one that's been overseeing operations here. Anything back in this direction at all? No, it doesn't look like it. I think it was just that data pad. Okay, now we're going way back. So, yeah. Let's head on up. Head on over and on up to that. Let's get a little more at it. Okay, and why don't we save here as well? get stuck on the rocks while we're at it. <laughs> and we can see the area that we came from. Look at the trajectory we had to take. Is that our first of the beacons? It might have been there to there to there to there to there to there to there and then eventually up here. Here what sounds like gunfire. Something. Electronics? Sparks? Oh. Uh, well, we see marks in our map here. Let's see, we got a Blood Pack Trooper. Ooh, and we've got Salamul, the guy in question. And he is quite close to us here. So I think we might want to fall back a bit. Especially if Miranda, 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 stop that. Stop that. Moving. No, you're not, though. Ow. Just want to see if we can poke our head out. Get some people. Like the Boom Squad member. I would very much like to get rid of him. Did that even hit him at all? Uh, I think it did. I think we got rid of him. Okay, but Salomon is very much still there. Oh, no, you, you are not dead. You are not dead. That still hit us. Let's give it a second. Did, did we not hit that read? Because we didn't get the the visual effect of it. And ow, nailed us with that. I feel like we're not getting landing the read. Wait for the barriers. There we go. Okay, just you know, resort to the, the basic weapons. Oh, there's the leader. Let's take a second. Get our barriers back. And I'm thinking at least against him when he's got barriers. We don't have a great barriers weapon other than the Locust, really. It's our best option. Likewise for, well, Perfect. everybody. So if we're trying to focus on him next. Okay, well, it's not good for armor, but we can maybe... Deal with armor. Just our abilities. Oh, enough behind the rock to avoid getting hit. That's what's happening. The rock is blocking it. We're getting rock blocked. There we go. And that actually hits Solomon with some of that stuff, so that's good. Hey, Solomon. And now he's down to armor. He, uh, I don't know. He seems pretty keen on just staying there, which is probably a good thing for us. Yeah, we have better weapons against armor. You got it done. It will be done. Like that. He is a Krogan, so we will, in theory, have life regeneration unless we hit him with fire abilities or warp and and reeve. He's fallen back here a bit. 
And he's disabled by the Reeve, gets stunned by it, and I think that may have been the last of them. He was, as we were saying, the guy who appeared to have been leading the operations here, based on what we were hearing from on all of the, the data pads we are reading. Let's see, it looks like it's just... Just this communication terminal now. Let's bypass this. Okay, what do we get? That's a simple one. You go all the way over here. You go here, and you go here. That's a weird sound. It sounds like we should get out of here. But mission complete. Encountered unclassified hostile alien species. Eliminated blood pack forces. Don't know if that's technically supposed to be referring to the Klixen, who we have seen on Tuchanka, or the other larger flying creatures that seem to show up before we encountered Klixen every time. About 125 experience. Got 3,000, or well, total of 7,500 credits. And we got 2,000 platinum. So, awesome. 